Good morning, House of Praise family. You're welcome into the presence of the Lord. Shall we please rise to worship? If you're joining us online, we're excited you're worshiping with us today and we welcome you to church. Amen. Amen. Now there's this story, this majestic story in the Bible, in the book of Revelations, that talks about the 24 elders who had their own thrones and their own crowns, but they will fall down and they will cast their crowns before him who sits on the throne and will worship him. And we're just hoping that you will worship him today with us. Can we start by just casting every crown before the Lord? Come on, appreciate him for how far he has led you, all he has done for you. Appreciate him for his miracles. It could be your family, it could be your wife, it could be your job. At Thank Him for how far He has lifted you. Come on, house of praise. People of God, just cast your crowns before the Lord. Father, we bless you. We acknowledge that we can never have come this far without you. And we give you all the praise and all the glory. We honor you, Jesus. We honor you, Father. We lift you up, Holy Spirit. We thank you. We are thankful for your grace. We are thankful for your love. We are thankful for your mercies that keep us day after day after day. Thank you for my children. Thank you for my wife. Thank you for my home. Thank you for my job. Thank you for making a way where there seems to be none, oh God. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your faithfulness. We worship you, Jesus. Come on, lift your voices, everybody. Cast every crown before him. Exalt the Lord. He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy. He's worthy. There is none like you, Jesus. There is none like you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. You're worthy of it all. You're worthy of it all. You're worthy of our praise. And we freely give it to you this morning. We freely give you our worship. We give you worship. We give you honor. We give you glory. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things, and you deserve the glory. Sing it again. Say, you are worthy of it all. of it all for from you are all things and to you are all things and you deserve the glory lift your voices everybody all the saints and angels and all the saints and angels
day and night, night and day, let it set so Sing it high. again, day and night, day and night, night and day, let it set so
we praise you from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same the lord's name is worthy of praise come on house of praise shout unto the lord shout unto your king he's a word father we bless you what a mighty god you are we give you praise lord we honor you we love to praise your name you're the beautiful one we love to exalt you we love to praise you. There is none like you. We bow in your presence. We lift you up, Jesus. What a great God you are. What a great God you are. What a great God you are. There is none like our King. There is none like our God. There is none like our rock. There is no rock like our God. What a hiding place you are. You give us strength from day to day. We love you, Jesus. We love your name. We love to exalt you. We bless your name, Jesus. And there is only one name. There is only one name with power to save. With power to save.
champion. He reigns forevermore. Oh, yes, forevermore. Everybody sing it in concert one more time. Everybody lift your voices. Say it out. to be in the presence of God. Give God a shout offering. Come on. You can do better than that to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the great I am, the lift of our head, the lover of our neighbor welcome to my daddy's house come on say with a sense of, of ownership welcome to my daddy's house hallelujah you may be seated thank you so much PPV good morning house of praise it is such a joy such a privilege to be in the house of our father um, this morning I have the immense privilege of um, celebrating those that are worshiping here at the house of praise with us for the very first time so if you're in the sanctuary and today is your first time being in the presence of God here at the house of praise can you please wave at me awesome all right you're very welcome house of praise can we please celebrate them you're very welcome to the house of praise. We're super excited that you're here this morning. Um, again, it gives me great joy to tell you about my church, the house of praise. House of praise is one of the many parishes of the redeemed Christian church of God worldwide. And what we do and don't do is clearly guided by our vision and that vision is very simple it's to empower you to achieve your dreams it's to empower you to fulfill your destiny and it's to empower you to be a positive influence in your society so again you're very welcome even those worshiping with us online for the very first time you are very very welcome we're so glad that you're spending your Sunday morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you're joining us from with us. Again, this is the House of Praise. Now here at the House of Praise, we meet together as a family at least twice a week. The first time is on Fridays where we meet for our midweek service at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And the second time that we meet is on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m., just like we're meeting today. So again, you're very welcome. Now, there's something um, that I want to mention for you to stay tuned with us. Now, we are very present on social media, on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, and on YouTube for where you're streaming from, for those that are watch watching online, under the handle HO Praise. So I would like to encourage you to subscribe, you know, follow our pages so that you will stay up to date with what is happening here at the house of praise and i want to let you know we are in a very exciting season as a family as individual this is our season of joy and we're marching towards the grand finale the grand celebration on sunday december 4th so if you happen come on yeah yeah all right you can do better than that sunday december 4th that is the day that god has ordained for us to celebrate so if you're planning to make your way to the GT or if you don't know what you're going to do that way that day now I would love to um, invite you Sunday December 4th is going to be our day of celebration and you are invited 
So once again, you're very, very, very welcome. Now, like I said earlier, we are in our season of joy. And God has been doing amazing stuff in our midst, both for the people that are sitting inside the building and also for you that are, that are watching online. So with that, I just want you to take this opportunity here, a snippet of what God is doing in our midst. So with that being said, let us welcome Pastor Anne. Hallelujah. Amen. I have three amazing testimonies to share today. As always, if you have a testimony, don't keep it to yourself. Send it to goodnews at houseofpraise.ca. The first testimony says, to God be the glory, great things he has done, and great things he will do. My special thank you to PWA, PTA, and all the ministers and champions in HOP. I had given a testimony during the pandemic on my appointment in a Fortune 500 company for making decisions here in Canada, despite not lobbying or applying for the role. I was the first person of my gender and color to ever hold that position, despite having the least experience out of all the potential candidates. The other four people in this appointment have held high public offices. They were CEOs, etc., and have been in the role for many years. Initially, I was intimidated, but after praying, I knew God had me there for a purpose. He gave me this inner peace and confidence in it all. So far, so good. It could only have been Jesus. The boldness and ideas that come out of my mouth in the meetings, it is definitely the Holy Spirit talking, not me, as I know not what I say. In this short time, I have become a wonder to many, as PWA always prays for us. There have been many accolades, awards, and recognitions for God's works through me. The Lord has moved us and the company forward in miraculous ways despite the pandemic. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. To God be all the glory. Hallelujah. In the season of higher grounds, God blessed us with a new home. We had challenges trying to sell our old home. The resources to close the new home seemed impossible, but we know with God all things are possible. We cried out to God daily, and during the prayer and fasting period of higher grounds, our faithful God not only gave us creative solutions, he provided for us miraculously, sorted everything out, and we closed the new home successfully. Praise God. There have been many healing testimonies. I cannot tell it all. I was diagnosed with a pre-medical condition that caused gradual deterioration of body organs. My biological mom died of this ailment. So the devil tried to put thoughts in my mind, but thank God for Jesus. And for the teachings from PWA, I claimed all the healings in the season of special miracles took part in prayer and fasting. To God be the glory, I got confirmation that the condition has completely reversed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our God of special miracles has healed me of this condition, and our healings are permanent in Jesus' name. In our family devotion every morning, we end our sessions with all the confessions from PWA. From last year, this is my year of the miraculous. We have substituted it with this is my year of divine favor for this year. I have a wonderful future with a happy ending. Psalm 37 verse 37. It will end in glory for us. Our season of joy is here. My family loves these confessions and it gives us a daily boost like a morning tonic. God has been so good to me and my family, and we have come to say thank you. The teachings from House of Praise have blessed our family tremendously and have moved us forward in every aspect of our lives. 
Thank you again, PWA, PTA, and the ministers. May the Lord's blessing, anointing, knowledge, and wisdom continue to increase upon your lives. Thank you so much for all your teachings on the pulpit, in the workers, groups, meetings, etc. May God reward you all abundantly for all you do for us. Thank you, HOP. To God be all the glory. Great things he has done. Great things he will do. Praise the Lord. Amen. The second testimony says, the Lord gave us a home. Good morning, Pastor Wale and the entire HOP family. We had to share this immediately to give thanks to God for his faithfulness in our lives and for constantly being by our side in all situations. We thank God for his blessings over this church and for the ministers, for all the ministers. On the 20th of May, during the Covenant of Mercy final prayer and fasting session, PWA gave an instruction from the Holy Spirit for those who had not bought a house before. The instruction was, before the 20th of June, get in touch with a real estate agent and tell them you want to buy a house. My husband and I had been trusting God to be able to move into our own home this year. But we were planning to start the process sometime in November slash December because I was on maternity leave. We wanted to start searching after both of us were back to our full incomes. We keyed into this prophetic declaration, had faith, and made up our minds to obey. After the prayer session, we decided to get in touch with a realtor before June 20th as instructed instead of waiting till November. On the 6th of June, we reached out to a realtor and also a broker to kickstart the process. We had a figure we were trusting God for in terms of a home purchase price. God showed up from the very start of the journey all through to the end. What God did. We got pre-approved for the exact purchase price we were praying about on the 30th of July. Fast forward to September, I returned to work and we officially started looking for a place. Exactly two weeks after resuming and looking at places, we found a place we loved. We put, it, put in an offer and the sellers accepted the exact figure we prayed about. Amen. That's the testimony right there. This was actually unexpected because even our realtor had said that the amount was the least, said that amount was the least they might accept and he was positive they wanted a higher figure. Throughout the close, closing process, different things came up to frustrate the process, but we kept standing on God's word. In Isaiah 54, verse 2 to 3, Psalm 37, verse 37, and Isaiah 61 and verse 7. There were days I literally felt like the different times of prayer and fasting this year were specifically meant for us because they happened at key periods throughout the process. This is a testimony. We got our home keys on the 27th of October to the glory of God. We are joyful and our hearts are full. December 4th will be the first Sunday we spend in our home as we plan to move in by the end of November. We cannot wait for that day of thanksgiving to God. We are truly in a season of joy and this joy shall be permanent in the lives of every member of HOP and the lives of all our ministers in Jesus' name. Thank you, PWA and PTA, for everything you do to keep us grounded in the word. Joy shall never depart from your lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. The last testimony says, I have seen the goodness of God. Good evening, PWA, PTA, and the entire HOP family. I have come to testify of the goodness of God. I wrote a major exam early this year, and on the day of the exam, I noticed that I began to experience intense fear and panic. I had never experienced a panic attack in my life, but on that day, I knew what it meant. 
I had studied and prepared for the questions, but was simply unable to answer them properly. I kept hearing a voice saying, you are going to fail and you will come back to write it. I felt so defeated and discouraged such that I was even unable to revise during the break before paper two. When the result came out, my score was a few marks short of the cutoff. It was so painful, but rather than break down emotionally and mentally, I became even more determined to scale the mountain before me. I joined in all the fasts and prayers and I began to speak to all my books saying, Hello, exam books. I'm so glad I won't be needing you anymore. It's time for you to go. I'm definitely passing this exam this time around. PWA taught us that Jesus spoke to the stormy sea and the spirit behind the storm heard. Amen. So I kept speaking to the situation, declaring God's word and praising him because his word does not fail. I put together a list of verses, including Isaiah chapter 61 and verse 7, that applied to my situation and recited them often. I also spoke against that demonic voice of fear, and I silenced it in the name of Jesus. To God be the glory, I took the exam again, and though it was more technically challenging than the previous one, God proved himself true and gave me double honor instead of shame. Hallelujah. I passed the exam, praise God. Thank you, PWA and PTA, for teaching us how to stand on God's word and enjoy the physical manifestation of the promises of God. I am grateful to God that it did not end in shame for me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I think that we can see consistently throughout all the testimonies, it is the word of God applied to our situation that works. It's not just speaking off or cramming or just speaking randomly. The word works. Tell your neighbor the word works. Praise the Lord. Let's rise on our feet as we worship. Let's welcome Minister Eliezer.
Jesus, we lift up your name. 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 Father, we lift up your name above all other names, above our circumstances, above situations around us, above any other name, we lift your name high. We exalt you, our Lord, because you are good. Your goodness, your mercies, they remain forevermore. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for your goodness in our life. Lord Jesus, we are appreciative of your sacrifice for us. Where would we have been if not for the sacrifice of Christ? So we lift your name high. We exalt you. Take all the glory and all the honor. Take all the adoration. In Jesus' wonderful and mighty name, we have worshipped. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You are welcome to this morning service. And uh, before we sit down, I want us to thank God, especially for making you to be able to come. You know, there are many things that could have disturbed you today. Uh, yes, uh, for soccer people, <laughs> praise the Lord. We have something happening in Qatar, right? For tennis people, there is something happening in Turin, Italy, right? And for, uh, is it for American football? There's something happening in Canada. So some things are happening everywhere. And on top of that, there is weather. Oh, where I live, uh, the snow is uh, it's coming up, but you know what? Nothing can stop us. So we are going to pray. We are going to thank God for giving us the opportunity to be well, to be alive, to be in his house. We are in the sanctuary. We are not in the mortuary. Father, we are grateful unto you. We thank you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We exalt you this morning, Lord. Thank you for the salvation of our souls. And Father, we thank you, O Lord God, for life that you have given unto us. Life, an abundant life that you have given unto us. Jesus Christ said that I give unto you life more abundantly. Father, we thank you that we are, we are healthy, we are healthy, we are able, we can lift our hands, we can walk around, we can stand from the bed, we can move around, we have our shower, we can dress up. We do not take these things for granted, Lord. We thank you because it is in you we live, we move, we have our being. Father, accept our thanks this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, all right. So, please let's have our seats. Well, um, before I continue and go into the message, I would like to give a special appreciation to my father in the Lord, my pastor, uh, Pastor Wale and Pastor Tokwe Akishiku. So let's, uh, let's thank God for them. Uh, it might interest you to know, I've been under their uh, ministry for well over 18 years. So if somebody's mentoring you for 18 years and uh, you can stand, uh, well, you have to give glory to God. And I know for many of you too, you have your, you have your stories, you have the testimonies, you have where they have really impacted you. I mean, listen to those messages is application of what we learn here. Application of the word, the word of God is not scarce in house of praise. So Pastor Wale, Pastor Tokwe, I know you are, you are fine where you are and I'm sure they are listening to me. Uh, God will help me. I will deliver in Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And I also want to welcome all of you for defiling the odds and showing up today. So thank you for coming. And um, all the viewers all across the world that is uh, listening to us and those people that will still listen to this message, 
uh, on different platforms, we also welcome you. And I pray that the determination that you have that brought you here today, that brought you to be listening, God will honor that determination in Jesus' name. And you will possess your possession in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I want to take special thanks to all the ministers and everyone that has been praying for this service. And I pray that um, your prayers, it will be answered in the mighty name of Jesus. Okay, so, um, you know, over the last uh, two weeks, we've been listening to our wonderful ministers. Um, two Fridays ago, we listened to uh, Pastor Charles Arimoro. He taught us about becoming a positive influence, part one. And um, he said that we should make sure that we don't have wrong motives. You know, if you want to, if you want to become a positive influence, I think he used um, the example of Joseph, that you cannot be self-centered, you cannot uh, have wrong motives, and you cannot harbor bitterness. You have to look out for good of others. So fantastic. Uh, two days ago, Pastor, um, um, Pastor, oh, Pastor Paul, yeah, sorry, Pastor Paul, yeah, you, you can see what a stage fright can do for you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> so Pastor Paul, I'm looking at him and seeing him, uh, I'm like, uh, where is, what's his name? <laughs> All right, Pastor Paul, two days ago. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, so he took part two of that message. And um, he talked about root, how root was determined to follow now, despite um, and in spite. She was a Moabitized. She wasn't supposed to be uh, in the house of God. It was not supposed to happen for her. But you know what? She said, no, I'm good. and she's determined. And that commitment, that determination, that faith accounted for her. And eventually, you know, she's mentioned in the genealogy of our Lord Jesus Christ. And last Sunday, oh my God, <laughs> praise the Lord. <laughs> Pastor Chuma, our chairman, he talked about getting ready to advance. And I just took, you know, I took like two, three liners. One, the greatest obstacle to your advancement is your mindset. Boom. It's your mindset. It took us through the journey of Mr. Harvey, you know, <laughs> praise the Lord, that was uh, at the pool of Bethsaida for 38 years because of his mindset. His mindset kept him there. So it's not the plan of God, but his mindset kept him there. And he said that um, though that pool is called the house of loving kindness, he was there. But nothing happened. But his mindset restricted him. And he said to Rod that we should stop waiting for the stirring of the water. We should stir ourselves up spiritually. Well, wow, God bless you all, all our pastors. Um, those messages are right there. They are available on, the, on our YouTube, YouTube platform. So please uh, avail yourself. Build yourself up. And God will... God will honor you and God will help you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, today we are going to start a, start a journey. Is the journey to greater glory. Journey to greater glory. The question is, are you ready? So this is going to be the part one of, that, of this message, the journey to greater glory. Our text will be taken from 2 Corinthians 3. Verse 18, 2 Corinthians 3, 18 in NKJV. But we all, with unveiled face, we beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, we are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just by as the Spirit of the Lord. Can we change it to NLT? Thank you. Please help me change it to NLT. So, all of us who have had that veil removed, we can see and we can reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord, who is the Spirit, 
makes us more and more like him as we are changed into his glorious image. So you can see right there that the plan of God for us is to be like him, to have glory like him, to, 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 to have glory today, more glory tomorrow, much more after, and continue to be glorious. So it's greater glory. And I want to bring us back to Second Corinthians 3, I mean 4, 3 to 4. You remember when we are praying, every time we are praying for unbelievers, what do we do? We use the scriptures that God will help them and this veil that is covering their eyes will be removed, right? We said even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. To those whose mind the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. So then, but 2 Corinthians 3, 18, NLT is saying that the veil has been removed. So once the veil is removed, the next thing is glory. Because it is the veil that stops people from seeing the glory. But once that veil is removed, once you have said that prayer, that you give your life to Christ, that veil has been removed. Because no one can come unto the Father except he himself draw them. Once he draws you, you get engaged, somebody preaches the word to you, boom. And you will see, you know, and you, you will hear, and you will believe. But if the time is not there, if the veil is not yet removed, you won't see. So for all of us, that the veil has been removed. What God wants for us is that we move from glory to glory. Psalm 71 verse 21. The Bible says that you shall increase my greatness, and you will comfort me on every side. God will, re God, God will increase your greatness. He will comfort you on every side. So the, God, the intention of God is for all his children to go from glory to glory, from one great greatness to the other. When we hear of you, two years from now, three years from now, five years from now, things that it's so difficult for even you to believe. If they tell you that you will be there, you will do it. It is difficult for you to believe. That will be your realm in Jesus' mighty name. That is the plan of God for all of us. But what is glory? So, okay, we're talking about glory. So what is glory? Glory, we can call glory as dignity. Glory means you have dignity. Glory means you have honor. In the TPT translation of the Bible, glory is described as magnificence. You, 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 have, you have magnificence. Glory includes riches, excellence, notable renown. You are majestic. And in Psalm 8, verse 4 to 5 in NLT, the Bible says that what is man or what are man, mere mortals, that you should think about them? These human beings, what, why are you thinking about them? But what did he do? Yet God made them only a little lower than Elohim. And what did he do? He crowned them with glory and honor. Even before you and me we are formed in our mother's womb, we were crowned. Once you move to the lineage of Jesus Christ, you, you, you get into this. He, he already crowned you with honor and glory. And shame will not be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The opposite of honor or the opposite of glory is shame. The opposite of glory is vanity. The opposite of glory is instability. Someone cannot sit in one place. They can't have promotion. They, they just stagnated. That is the opposite of glory. Emptiness. I know one of our pastors was talking and he was talking about empty ass. Spirit, spiritual forces that comes to empty people. They walk, they do things, they can't even say this is what I have or this is what I've been able to gather. But that ends today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Opposite of glory is disgrace. It's reproach. 
but that will not be our portion because Joel 2:26, the Bible says that we shall eat in plenty and we shall be satisfied and we will praise the name of the Lord our God who has dealt wondrously with us and then he move on to say and my people so this is God talking my people my people are you one of the God's people my people shall never be put to shame and you will never be put to shame in the name of Jesus Christ so that is what God said about his people. So if you see anything that is not glory, that is not magnificent, that does not have riches, that does not have what you are expecting, then it's not from God. Because you heard what he said, that my people shall never be put to shame. If you are seeing anything like vanity, instability, stagnation, it is not from God. You have to rise and you have to fight. Praise the Lord. So the journey to greater glory. Now, it may interest you that the journey to greater glory, of course, will not start from glory. In most cases, it might start with disappointment. In most cases, it might start with challenges. It might start with even physical afflictions. But you know what? There's a reason why you go through that. What you need to know every time you come in contact with these kind of situations like disappointment, challenges, um, afflictions, trials, temptations, this is what you must note. That these disappointments, these challenges, these afflictions, they do not originate from God. They do not originate from God. They originate from the devil and his demons. God allows them, permits them, but let's see why God will allow it. Praise the Lord. For you to know that it's not from God, James 1.13, what did the Bible say? Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. God does not tempt anyone. Bible, your word, the word of God, defied it correctly. God does not test anyone. He allows it. And I will show you why he allows it. Job 34 verse 12. Surely, God will never do wickedly, nor will the Almighty pervert justice. When you're seeing perversion of justice, when you're seeing injustice, when you're seeing all those kind of things, God is not from God. It's from the pit of hell. It's from the devil and his demons. Because they have seen already what God has said, that he crowns you with glory and honor. But they want to distract. They just want to, if he did it to Jesus Christ, how much more you and me? But Romans 5 from verse 1 to 4, the Bible says that, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 2, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Verse 3, and not only that, yes, we have, we have hope, we rejoice, we have, there is grace for us, yes, but not only that, not only that, but we also glory in what? In tribulations. We glory in tribulations knowing that the tribulation produces perseverance. Tribulation produces uh, perseverance and perseverance produces character. And character will produce what? Hope. And it is hope that we need. You need hope. If your situation 
is not what you are expecting. What do you need? It's hope. You need hope to know that. No, it will not end like this. It will not end until what God said concerning me, concerning you, comes to pass. It will not end until I have physical, tangible, evident, touchable, feelable manifestations of God's word. Just like those testimonies that you had. You, 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 will just, you are convinced that you have hope. It is in this period that we develop character. When you develop character, you develop the trust in God. You, de you develop um, the fact that you know that before it went to pass, you went through some things and God delivered you. So you begin to trust him more. You begin to say, wow, if God delivered me some two, three years ago, maybe it was health challenge, maybe it was finance, maybe it was admission you are looking for. Some people are looking to come to travel to Canada and God gave you that. You say, wow, God that gave me that. He can give me the whole Canada itself. Praise the Lord. That's when you begin, yeah, that's then when you begin to trust him more. But when you're not going through those things, how do we know your character? How do we know if you're going to be cursing when things don't go your way? How do we know? How does God know? So that's why he permits it. That's why God permits it. What did Jesus Christ say about this? In John 16, 33, Jesus Christ said, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In Jesus Christ, we will have peace. But what about in the world? <laughs> what is waiting for you there is tribulation, is trial. But he also, tell, he also gave us a reassuring word. He said, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Our God has overcome the world. And, it's as, and he has, as he has overcome the world, you and I also will overcome our world in the name of Jesus Christ. So it might start with increased pressure. There might be pressure on you to do what you are not supposed to do. It might even lead or it might start from potential fear for real shame. You know, that is like, wow, this thing is going to be shame. Shame is coming, but remember the word of God in Joel that my people shall never be put to shame. In the case of that woman, in 2 Kings, chapter number 4, if you look at verse 1, it was, the, the creditors are there. They are making a demand. They want to take this, the sons. Pressure. She doesn't have anything. She doesn't have the money. The husband went into some bad deals, kind of, right? Because how will you go into a deal and your children are the guarantee? <laughs> What kind of covenant? What kind of deal is that? But you know, if you look at verse 7, what happened? The same, the same guarantee that they want to come and take, they are the ones that went out, went to borrow vessels. And the prophet told her, go, sell the oil, pay your debt. You and your sons live on the rest. The miracle that's going to make you go sell, pay your debt, you and your family live on the rest, I pronounce it upon you today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Where there is potential shame, where there is a, a, a situation that potentially could lead to shame, I prophesy and I speak that in the name of Jesus Christ, as it happened for this woman, that it ended up in glory. For you, for your family, for your children, wherever they are, it will end in glory in the name of Jesus Christ. So we are quickly going to look at an example of David. The story of David is a, it's a long story, um, but I'm just going to try. God will help me to simplify it. The first time we were introduced to him was when he was keeping the sheep. And then um, a prophet came, and uh, the, the prophet said, Every other, all your brothers, all your senior brothers, they are not the one that God chose. 
that it's you. Go and bring him. So that was in um, 1 Samuel 16, verse 11. Samuel anointed him. But do you know that that was the beginning of his problems? Exactly, just as it normally happens. Once the mark of God is on someone, the enemy also target them. That, ah, this thing that God wants this person to do, ah, no, 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 I don't want it. Because he knows that God is going to take the glory. So his problem started. He was doing well as a shepherd boy. As a matter of fact, I had last Sunday, you know, sometimes we peep to the uh, Ignite uh, messages too. I had, I think it was Pastor James that was talking. And he said, very good, very good shepherd that he, he left the care of the sheep in another hand, in the hand of another shepherd. Very, very diligent guy. So he was contented. He was okay. He was doing well. But suddenly anointing came. They anointed him to be the king of Israel. Remember, he's king of Israel, right? He was anointed um, by, by Samuel in um, 1 Samuel 16, verse 13. And from that time, from that moment, he started facing various challenges until finally he was able, God was able to help him to overcome these challenges and he was able to sit on the throne. But let's just look, let's just have some background a little bit. So the first thing is, if you look at the life of David, he was pursued by King Saul. I mean, this is a young man that could do, he was not even fit to be in the army of Saul. But he risked his life because he, he believed and he was determined. He believed the God that helped him face the lion, face the bear. Oh, come on, how about this, this guy? No, this guy cannot. The same God will deliver this one to me. And he risked his life. And he went and he fought. He, the Bible said that he was able to stop the reproach. The shame that was supposed to go to Saul and his household. This guy was able to stop it. But what did, what did Saul do? He tried to pin him down. He tried to kill him. He was always looking for how to kill him. 1 Samuel 18, 11. 1 Samuel um, 19, 10. And 11, 8. He was looking, how, how am I going to kill this boy? And unfortunately for him, some people were singing his praise. There was a king on the throne. You are singing a young man, a teenager's praise. You are building, you are building enemies for this young man. That's, that's, that's what happened. But God was with him. He, he had to leave his homeland and family. In 1 Samuel 19, 18, he had to leave, he had to flee. 1 Samuel 19. 19, verse 18. Can we have that quickly? 1 Samuel 19, 18. So David fled and escaped and went to Samuel at Ramah. I mean, God told me that where do you flee to when affliction comes? This guy fled back to where he was anointed. The, the man who God used to anoint him. He fled back to God. To someone that he knows that well, well, he will give me godly counsel. He will, he, I know, I mean, it's my father. He will give me. So where do you and I, where do we run to? But David fled. He escaped. Went to Samuel at Ramah. He told him, sir, after you anointed me, see all the testimonies. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Because they are testimonies, right? Told him what the soul has done to him. And he and Samuel went and they stayed in Nyot. So he had to flee his family. He lived in caves. He became a renegade. He was moving all about. Somebody already anointed as king. In 1 Samuel 24, verse 1 to 3, you will see where he was. In the cave. I mean, I ran away from palace, man. I ran away from the city. I ran away from you. You came with 3,000 soldiers to look for me in the, in the caves. How ferocious is that kind of an enemy? But you know what? Every determined enemy that is telling you, that is coming after you, coming after your destiny, the Lord will deliver you from their hand in the name of Jesus Christ. 
The Lord delivered David, though he had only just a few people, like 600, the Bible said. Not even all of them are, are, are fit, but God delivered him. And that same God that delivered him will deliver you and I in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. He fought many battles. In fact, when the Bible was saying that, you remember that Goliath is a Philistine, right? He went back to the Philistines to get a court because now his master is running after him to kill him. Imagine. The, do you know that, do you think they like him? No. He was the one that, that, that subdued their warrior. They don't like him. They actually rejected the, the accord. They said, no, 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 okay. They first sized him up. They look at this guy. It's possible we go to war one day. The, way, the same way he killed Goliath. This guy might turn on us. No. And he was everywhere, running elter skelter. The Bible said he, he fought with uh, the Geshurites, the Gizites, the Amalekites, all of that you see in 1 Samuel chapter 27. The accord he tried to, to do with the Philippians, they rejected him. How, I mean, very frustrating. But God is with him. And when God is with someone, no matter what the challenges you are facing, just know that in as much as you are in the right standing with God, he will surely deliver you. Just like those three Hebrew boys. They said, that, oh God, we care not to answer you. Our God that we serve, he will deliver us. Even if he forgot us, but you know that he doesn't forget. They even put a clause there that this one, we seal it. So that you know, even if he doesn't deliver, we won't even bow. So that is the final one. I mean, are you at that point? Even if I don't get a job, I won't compromise. Even if I'm a single lady, I'm looking for, uh, for marriage, I'm not going to compromise. Are you at that level? Because that is the level where God will say, yes, I can trust this one. Praise the Lord. And when our friend David was finally settling down, it looks like everything is normal, normalcy has come now. Then, he, I mean, he had a, this not so beautiful like our houses, but at least he has somewhere to call home with his family and all the people around him in Ziklag. Just look like, okay, the Philippians said no, the Philippines said no, and all of this, Saul is pursuing me, but you know what? Let's stay here in Ziklag. And boom, look at what happened to him, First Samuel chapter 30. And in Ziklag, he went away. If you look at 1 to 6, the Amalekites came, they raided their camp. They went away with everything. All the family, the wives, the children, everything. They cutted away everything. So it just seems like this will never end. His house or the makeshift house, we can call it in Ziklag, was burned down with fire. There was no warning signs. You know you can prepare if there is warning, if there is... Um, Something that you need to prepare. I mean, you know, okay, I have up to, okay, December 20-something. Okay, let's start preparing. There was no warning sign. Just happened, boom. There was a lot of room for him to misinterpret what is happening. But David did not. There are so many questions. There are few answers. Who, what do you do? When you don't even, when it seems like God is not talking back, God is not talking back to you, what do you do? So many questions, few answers. For the first time in David's life, he didn't know what to do. He didn't know where to go. He didn't even know where to start. Remember, at this point, actually, Prophet Samuel is dead. That was his mentor. That was the, the man that gives him counsel. He's dead. Where does he turn to? But what did he do? David turned to God. To even make matters worse, in verse 6, do you know that he lost, he almost lost the trust and leadership over his team, over the people. They were thinking of stoning him. Uh, you know, this guy, we've been following this guy now. You know, they will be telling each other, you know, I, I told you that this thing that this guy, this rebel, this thing that he's doing, one day it will backfire, I see now. 
we are all empty now. You know, some of them will be making those kind of negative pronouncements. But we thank God that despite that, what did David, what did he do? He went back to God. Because he knows that God has a plan. In Jeremiah 29 verse 11, God said, I know the plans that I have and my thoughts towards you. And it's that they are thoughts of peace and not of evil. They are thoughts to give you a future and a hope. Remember the hope? What produces hope? Perseverance. Perseverance. If you don't go through the perseverance, the trials that builds your character, you can't have the hope because there is no character. You know, the reason why God would trust some of his children more than the other is because they've proven themselves time and time and time and time and time. Many times over, they've proven themselves. Once you know that you have hope, in fact, there is hope. Once there is hope, forget about everything. It will turn back into your good in the name of Jesus Christ. God's plan was to take this man to greater glory. As God said in Psalm 71, verse 21, that he will increase his greatness. So increase my greatness means, first and foremost, he was serving in the palace. The guy chased him. He tried to pin him on the wall. In fact, when the spirit tormenting him will always come, because he, 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 he did not repent. He did not repent. And um, so, does it mean that the promotion you have for me is I got sacked from the palace? Of course, he got the reward, he got the wife, thank God, and all of that, but he got sacked. No job. He became someone that was running everywhere. No stability. But God, is that the... Is that the glory, the greater glory you want for me? That's not, that's the process. That's the journey. That is not the destination. It's the journey. It's what you are going through. Going through. You need to grow through it so that at the end of it, we see that you went through the fire, but the fire cannot sing. It cannot burn your, your, your clothes. The hair of your head is not seen. People look at you and they say, when they hear what you're going through, they say, are you? Are you, are you kidding me? They speak English, you know, they speak America. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I'm not kidding you. That is what happened. Because God is with him. So that, he held on to that word, that he will increase his greatness. He will increase, he will comfort him on every side. So, David remembered that God still had a plan for him. And as we know, if you look at 2 Samuel chapter 2, verse 4, he became, I mean, because we are fast forwarding now, David became anointed as the king to rule over the household of Judah. He had some, now he began to have some uh, resemblance or semblance of success, right? But we know that that's not the final stop. It took about 30 years, I mean about 15 years, thereabout, for him to move from when he was anointed to this point. But we know that God has not finished with him. So there is no loss you have suffered that God cannot reverse. I want you to have that, write it, underline it, bold in it, that there is no loss. There is absolutely no loss that you have suffered that God cannot reverse. I mean, look at all the testimonies that we hear in House of Praise. Uh, thank God my family is not also left behind. We have testimonies. Uh, praise the Lord. Thank you, sir. I mean, you all remember, if you've been in House of Praise for over 10 years, remember when Pastor Wale went, used his own money, bought keys, and he was handing over keys to people, right? You remember? Uh, International Center. We got keys. 
I remember I will, when I'm talking to the bank that time, I will put the key because that's his instruction. I listen. He said, every time, put the key. Just put the key. You remember? You all remember? But you know, for whatever reason, I don't know. Maybe it, it wasn't my time. It wasn't our time. We were struggling big time. One that we had, just one, to even pay the mortgage, we were struggling. But today, the story has changed. Because, because we held on. But you know, what, what were we doing? We were rejoicing. Every time we hear somebody, wow, we start dancing, we, we rejoice. There is no, we rejoice. We rejoice with those people that are. So that is what you should do. You might be going through yours now, but hold on to that God. In fact, there is a special one that God did for us this year. I think uh, I should say it, just to encourage and build somebody's faith. We, we were out of the country, and we had a closing. And this is a builder that has shifted the closing for like three times. And we said, okay, give us one week. <laughs> that we have secured mortgage, but they said they won't finish paperwork. For, they just need one week. The guys, the, the builder said no. I called my wife. I said, they said no. Uh, he said, she said no. They don't know what they're saying. You know, when we went for PDI, PDI is pre-delivery inspection. I don't know because nothing happens by chance. The guy that did the PDI for us, he showed us one of the units. He said, that one, the guy could not get a mortgage. And it is the builder that is selling it. That the, bu the, yeah, the, that the builder got it. Remember my wife, right? That the builder got this one and the builder is the one selling it. I said, oh, no way, not for me. Because for a good man, his story will be different. So immediately I counter it, man. I said, look at this guy. You no know, so just kind of rubbish seat. And, you know, just before closing, it became hot. They said no. But what is the testimony here? You are out of the country. So there is nothing like I will run to uh, Pastor Charles, Pastor Chuma, and let them all raise this money. Just go in, bring 100K, bring 100K. Bring, you know, I can't do that because I'm not even on ground. But you know what? That word has been said that this is our year of favor. So, what we held on to is that, well, God, this is not going to lead to shame because that's what you have said to us, that we will never be put to shame. We know that the enemy is trying us now. He's trying our faith now, but we know we're not going put to shame, be put to shame. They gave us 2 p.m. of that day, and they gave my lawyer, they said to my lawyer that if they don't close, we're going to come after them also. <laughs> that you either take it now, we are going to give you back your down payment. I'm like, huh? I didn't buy down payment, I bought the property. I bought a property and I'm going to close that property. Long story short, in this country, this same country, the mortgage broker went out of his way, got $400,000, no security, nothing, wired to my lawyer, lawyer closed. Boom. Lawyer texts me, your key is ready at so, 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 so time. No sweat. The God that did that, I mean, I've never heard of that before. I've never heard of that one before that. Now, this is not my brother, okay? This is not like he's um, from, you know, where we come from. No. A broker. He doesn't even know where I live. He, of course, he knows my address, but he's never been to where I live. But you see, God will raise help because he's favor. He owns. He owns everything. All he needs to do is to command, to say, oh, you see, that my son, he needs this. You just, he just prompt the person in his heart. Why not? You know what to do. Help him. Just help him. And that's how we sorted that one out. And there was no shame. And for you too, I prophesy in the name of Jesus Christ. That thing that you are going through, it shall lead to glory. It will not end in shame in the name of Jesus Christ. The same God is Lord over all. He came through for us. He averted the shame, the reproach. You know, some people will say, ah, is it only, I, I heard that they said they bought, maybe it's number two or number three or number whatever. But you know what? God did not allow the enemy to be able to have that word. He shut the mouth of the enemy. And today we glory in God that did it for us. Praise the Lord. So how did David get to greater glory as we round up? He decided to be joyful. He decided to be joyful. 1 Samuel 30 verse 6. 
he decided to be joyful. He, the Bible said that David encouraged himself in the Lord. So what's good? What are you going through? Encourage yourself in the Lord. Don't cave in. Pastor Schumer told us, don't wait for staring of the waters. Stare yourself up spiritually. All You see those people that got testimonies? They held on to scriptures. They held on to what we profess. And they went, they would go and look. I mean, if you come to see my house, my study, my bedroom, my washroom, my words everywhere, pasted. And I, in the morning, you look at it like this, you speak it. That's it. That's, that's it's the word that works. Praise the Lord. So he went back. He encouraged himself in the Lord. He refused to believe that all was lost. That's verse B. I mean, 6B. He refused. David strengthened himself in the Lord. He refused to believe that this is the end. This is how it's going to end. He refused it. He refused to blame people around him. Ah, oh, Pastor Chuma told us about uh, Mr. Avi was blaming other people. He sat down there for 38 years blaming other people. No, David did not blame any other person. He chose to seek God in praise, in prayer, and in the word. He chose in the midst of the adversity. He chose to praise God. He chose to pray. He chose to study the word. As we can see in 1 Samuel chapter 37 to 8. He called Abiata, bring me the effort. Let's seek the face of the Lord. It doesn't matter. Yes, he's going this way now, but we know that it's God that's going to help us. He called him. Bring this thing, bring this thing. Yes, he wept, he wept. He doesn't have strength to weep anymore. Weeping, yes, you weep. But after you wept, what will you do? Go back to God. Okay, daddy, now I'm, I'm back now. Okay, yeah, daddy, what next? Praise the Lord. And he will tell you what to do. Praise the Lord. And we know he to God told him what to do. He engaged the enemy. He was not a chicken. He was a warrior. He fought. The kingdom of God suffers violence. And the violent take it by force. You can't sit down and expect everything to fall on your laps. That, oh, well, it's just going to fall on my laps. No, you fight. You fight. Fight for what God has promised you. 1 Samuel 30, from 17 to 20, he went, he went after these people, he fought, he raided them, he got the spoils, he rescued everyone, he won, he got back to glory. So the glory that he experienced, what is it that he experienced, that David experienced? He got good news. Where everybody was crying, lamenting, before everybody was dejected, they wanted to stone him, the whole atmosphere changed. And I speak to the atmosphere in your, in your life that the atmosphere will shift from mourning to joy in the name of Jesus Christ. The atmosphere will shift from despair, from desperation, desperate need to testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The atmosphere shifted. He realized and he fulfilled his destiny because he became the king. His destiny is to reign over all the land of Israel. That was his destiny. When Samuel anointed him, he anointed him king over Israel. At that point, when he was in Ziklag, he wasn't king of anything. But eventually, God moved him. He became king over Judah. Then the usurpers, ha, lente brondeleye, zuntelema, shente broye. You know the usurpers? The emptiers? The usurpers. They are not the ones that are supposed to be sitting. And they come there and they sit. Today, God is dethroning them in the name of Jesus Christ. Every usurper, every usurper in your life, taking the glory, taking your position, the things that God has planned for you, the, the, the destiny that God has proposed for you, the usurpers that are using it right now, we dethrone them in the name of Jesus Christ. You take your rightful place. David took his rightful place because eventually, if you look at it, eventually in 2 Samuel verse 5 from verse 3 to 5, he became the king over the whole realm of Israel. Every usurper, all the ones that are doing 
whatever they are doing, they were all dethroned. The people came, all the elders uh, of Israel, they came to him at Hebron. He, they made covenant with him. And of course, they crowned him or they anointed him king. So David fulfilled his destiny. He recovered all. But it didn't just happen. It took years. Years of persistence. Years of character molding. Value building. Years of being persistent. Going back to God. Every time something happens to you, he always goes back to God. God, okay, what next now? What should I do now? Look at what he's doing to me. For you to know that this man built character, he had two opportunities at all. He had two opportunities to be vengeful. The guy said, no, 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 I've built character. That man too, Saul, is an anointed man. He was anointed too. I'm not going to touch him. That's somebody that has built character. You are now in a position to be vengeful. You are in a position to, is it revenge? Not avenge, right? Avenge is if it is not you. Revenge is if it is you. They did it to you. So you want to be vengeful. You want to revenge. He said, no. It's for small boys. Big boys, they look at it, they say, okay, well, God has helped me, then I overlook this, and I move on to my glory. Because only God knows, right? If he, if, he had, if he did that, we don't know what could have happened to him. And of course, you even know what he did to anyone that touches God's anointed. You know what David did. So, he built character during those processes. Though he was in the caves, he was in the wilderness, but he built character. And I pray as you and I, as we go through our own journey to glory, God will help us to be able to build character. God will help us to be able to trust him more. God will help us to be able to build our dependencies on him. God will help us to be able to take hold of the word and apply them in and out of season in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And as I conclude, regardless of the challenges and the afflictions, that you currently face regardless god still have a plan of greatness for you be rest assured that it will end in glory if you don't give up romans 20, romans 8 28 says that for we know we are not guessing we are not thinking we know we are so sure as much as we sure that tomorrow, there will, today there will be night, and then tomorrow there will be morning, except Jesus Christ came overnight. We know. You and I, we know. We are already counting. We already have plans. Abby, you already have plans for next. We have plans for December 4. Praise the Lord. We already have, because we know it's going to come, except Jesus Christ comes. So we know. We know. The Bible says that we know. That all things, all things work together for good to those people who are called according to, to uh, who love God first, those people who are called according to his purpose. Find the purpose. Pastor Paul told us, are you following the commission or you want the others? It is those people who do the commissions that God give the others. Rise up and let us pray. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you. The first prayer we are going to pray, we are going to pray. If you are there, either in the service here, or you are watching us anywhere you are in the world, the Bible says in John chapter 1 from verse 11 to 12, the Bible said that Jesus Christ went to his home and they did not receive him. <laughs> they make him common. Jesus Christ. They didn't receive him. Actually, if you go to Israel, some of them will be telling you stories. They didn't receive him. But what is verse 12? But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name. So you might be there. You have not believed. The reason why you will get to 
greater glory is first you have to give your life to Christ you have to give your life to Christ for if you have not done this in the past if you've done you've never done this or you did it and you backslide there's another opportunity for you today so if you are here in our midst or anywhere you are if you are not driving put your hand on your chest and let us pray just pray after me father I thank you for your word I thank you for sending Jesus Christ to save me today I've had your word that yes the people that Jesus Christ went to in his days his people they rejected him but you said that as many as believe and receive you you will make us to be sons of God father today I receive Christ into my life and I pray that it will be my Lord and Savior in Jesus mighty name I have prayed amen if you have said that prayer I believe that God has saved you and you are now born again so congratulations let's 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 clap for them we want you to to send a message to saved or send saved where can, can we put that on the screen please so that they can text yeah right there that number send saved to that number the church will it will give you opportunity to have a form that we can get across to you mail materials to you this church does not solicit funds so calm down okay we, nobody's asking <laughs> we don't and that's for over 20 something years that this church has been here I've been here 18 years they don't solicit so praise the Lord so it's just to bless you with materials that will help you to grow in this journey that you have started and as you do that God will bless you in Jesus name and for us we're going to pray for us that are here we're going to pray and we have one prayer that we're going to pray today we are going to say father grant me the grace and the courage to keep fighting till I get my greater glory in Jesus name so pray because that's all we need you need to be tenacious you need to stand in faith you need the grace of God and the Bible already told us that God's greatest grace is enough is available pray that as we have said and it has been spoken that this church we are in a season of joy that you and your family that you will not you will not be left behind that this season of joy as is being spoken in Psalm 30 verse 11 that God help me Lord to go through what is whatever I am going through right now develop character in me build faith in me that I will be able to walk the world I will be able to do what I need to do I will have the courage to move forward courage that I will have the courage that those three Hebrew boys they have courage they said that King we will not bow they are very courageous they are very bold that father grant unto me courage boldness to do what I ought I am I, I'm supposed to do at this season that will lead to my greater glory I know you have said it that you will increase my greatness and you will comfort me on all sides so father what I am supposed to do what I am I ought to do reveal to me Lord open my eyes to know Lord God, and give me the grace give me the courage that I will not have excuses I will not find faults I will not complain I will not murmur but I will go and I will I will do as you have spoken the instructions that you have given I will follow and my I will experience a greater glory in my life father we thank you we honor you we give you glory we give you honor father we pray that in the name of Jesus Christ as your children as we all go to do what you will speak to us as we all go as David did he went in worship he went in prayer he went in the word studying the word the Bible says that study to show yourself approved unto God a workman that needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the words of truth the father we will divide the word of truth we will not give in to the to the to, to the to, to, to the plans and the schemes of the enemy the the trials 
the trials will bet in us it will build our character it will build resilience in us it will build faith in us it will build dependencies in us in the mighty name of jesus christ and when we gather together by the time we gather december 4 every one of us we have reasons to be joyful our morning clothes will be torn will be removed and we'll have garments of joy in the name of jesus christ father we give you all glory we honor you lord in jesus wonderful and mighty name we have prayed Amen. praise the lord come on somebody Come on, somebody. Give God some praise for this word of inspiration and the word of glory. Hallelujah. God bless you, Pastor. Thank you for reminding us of the inevitability of our destination. Come on, tell your neighbor, my destination is glory. My destination is glory. And on your journey to glory, rejoice. So put a smile on your face. Look at your neighbor, anybody who is not smiling, put a smile on your face. Rejoice on your journey and your destination to glory. Persevere on your destination to glory and fight on your destination to glory. Please, one more time, one more time. Let's celebrate the man of God that has brought up the mind of God this morning. God bless you, sir. Please, I hope that you have purchased your outfit for December 4th. I hope, I hope you have put together, I hope you have gone to the bottom of your box to bring out your celebration clothes because without a doubt, December 4th, you will rejoice. Give him a down payment, give him a down payment. Thank you, Lord. In landing glory. Please be seated, God bless you. We thank God for what he has done in our midst today. We thank God for the man of God. At uh, this point, we're going to receive our tithes and our offerings. So this is your church. Begin to put your package that together. You know exactly what to do. Uh, for those who are joining us for the very first time, and you would like to partake in this opportunity uh, to give to the Lord and to honor him with your tithes and your offering and your gifts. You can do so as well. If you're in the house, the information you need to do so is behind me. If you're online, Information is on your screen and your device as well. The Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together. Shall men give unto your bosoms. Hallelujah. So as we package that, and of course, if you, if you would, would like to mail a check, you can do so at 3105 Dixie Road. Mrs. Saga is our address. So I'll give you just a few seconds. We'll rise, we'll pray, we'll worship, we'll go home. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad you came despite the weather? Hallelujah. All right. Thank you, Lord. All right. Let's rise up. We'll pray. Thank you, Father. Father, we honor you this morning. Thank you. We are very glad that we, are, we came to church today. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for the assurance that we have that it will end in glory. And thank you for the release of grace and faith in the house today. That, Father, we will hold on until we see the manifestation of your glory and the demise of our enemies. Lord, as we have responded to you in faith this morning to give of our very substance lord we are convinced that what you have said concerning your word about how that there will be a rain of of plenty over us as we obey you lord that word will receive it into our lives in jesus name doors that we have knocked on that have not opened father lord god things that we have believed that we have not seen lord we ask this week we will see it with our own eyes in jesus name the things that we have believed there will be a performance in the mighty name of jesus thank you for all that you have done for us we give you glory and honor in jesus name come on let's give rejoicing
He's done so much for us. We cannot tell it all. Has He done anything for you? Let's sing together. You've done so much. You've done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. He is my praise, oh Lord. If I had 10,000 tongues, this still won't be enough.
week in the name of Jesus. Till we meet again on Friday 7 p.m. Eastern Time. God bless you. Continue to rejoice and buy your outfit for December 4th. God bless you.